Hey, this is Mead here. We're going to do a little brief video, um, and we're going to take a monochrome object painting and convert it to complementary color. Um, this is going to be a fairly simple process. Oh, we have a monochrome done in black, white, and red, and now we're just going to add green to it. Um, so this one's going to be a chromium oxide green mixed in with that. So what you'll see here is that primarily the shadows in this painting were gray and cool. So I'm just going to go in with green mostly in the shadows and start creating some more value transitions, um, some different color mixtures, and mostly I'm going to keep the value range the same as it was. I'm just going to add green into it so that I can start to bump up the uh, apparent vibrancy of the red. One of the tricks that you'll see all the time in painting is people put complementary colors near each other to make one of them look more vibrant than it really would be against black or white or a more neutral color. So the other thing to remember about uh, color scheme is that you kind of want an imbalance of color. And what I mean by that is that in this case, the reds are fairly intense, fairly saturated in a lot of places. And what we want to do is do the opposite, up opposite of that with the green. So the green is going to be less saturated, less intense, and it's going to serve to bump up the effectiveness of the red. Now if I did the opposite where I had an intense red and an, and an intense green, they would both be fighting for your attention and we don't want to do that. We want a very clear relationship between the colors. One of the things that you'll see me do and just a little tip is as I mix colors, if I'm not sure that the color that I've mixed is perfect for a particular area. I'll get a little bit of it on the brush or the palette knife and I'll dot the painting. If it's totally the wrong color, I can go ahead and mix again, or if it's right, I can just go ahead and um, spread it out through the painting. Um, if, it, if it's drastically wrong, I can get a rag and wipe it up or use a palette knife to scrape it off the surface. One of the challenges of acrylic is doing more blended areas and gradient transitions. So what you wind up having to do is mix, you know, three to four different variations on a color um, in order to get that to work properly. Um, we don't want total color homogeny within uh, the way that we mix color. So we want some of the red and green to be mixed together. We want some of the green to be pure and we want some of the red to be pure. Um, and there's a whole, you know, large scale that we can mix within just using complementary colors. Um, especially when we add black and white to those colors, it allows us to get a huge number of ways to differentiate shapes instead of using a full color palette. The other thing that we always are trying to work on is color unity. So we want, when we mix colors, we want little bits of every other color in every color that we put down on the painting. So when you say you take green and white and you want to make a, a light color like this. If you put it down on a painting that's mostly complementary colors and there's red, it's going to kind of jump out as being disunified. So one of the things you can do is take even just the tiniest dot of red, maybe a little bit of black as well, and mix that together. It's still going to overall look, at, look like a pale green, but that little tinge of red is going to help you build color unity. Um, and that's one of the biggest problems that I see in, in many, many, many paintings um, is that the colors are kind of mixed very separately. And by the time they get on the, on the painting, 
they have nothing to do with each other. And so it kind of rips the painting apart at this very basic level. Um, one of the other um, tips that I have is early on in a painting, when you're blocking things out, you want to paint with big blocky flat areas of color and value and you want to keep the paint opaque but relatively thin. You want to cover the whole surface but you don't want it to be very thick with a lot of texture. You can build texture on at the end. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking that that you know bright red base there and I'm using a mixture of red and green and white to actually put a semi-transparent layer over that so that you can see that bright red through um, and it creates a, a rich and complex uh, painting surface and that's kind of what you want at the end of the day. Um, you want a painting that has visual impact from a distance and something that rewards you when it, when you get up close with uh, color complexity. The other main theme that I have lately is edges, and we're going to talk about that in a future video. So I hope you like this. If you enjoyed it a lot and you made it this far, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, you have a lot more painting videos and more drawing videos to look forward to. I appreciate all of your time. Thanks.